YMGI mini split air conditioning and heat pump systems feature a highly efficient and quiet outdoor condensing unit with one or more sleek, stylish, ultra quiet indoor air handling units. The air handling units are available in wall, ceiling, or floor mount configurations. The condensing units are available in single and multiple zone capabilities. Some of the tools required for installation include number two Phillips screwdriver, flat screwdriver, electric drill, three inch hole saw, drill extension, level, tape measure, two adjustable wrenches, wire cutters, wire strippers, number four metric Allen wrench, cable ties, nitrogen tank with the regulator, manifold gauges, a multimeter, vacuum pump, vacuum gauge, and a stud finder. The key to a long life of great performance with any of our products is proper installation from the beginning to the end. Each YMGI product has been fully tested before being packed. While product quality is important, the installation takes even more share as high as 60% of the quality for successful and peaceful operation and ensures the unit's lifetime to a maximum. Prior to the purchase of the unit, low requirement calculations for heating and cooling should be conducted by the installing technician or contractor for proper unit sizing. Use manual J or other reputable HVAC sizing programs. The installation of a mini-split system is different from that of the standard North American Central Cooling and Heat Pump System. By following the manufacturer's installation instructions closely and using caution throughout the entire installation process, unit failure and damage can be prevented due to steps that can easily be missed during the installation of these units. We strongly recommend that more than one technician be on site when installing the unit for safety reasons and for easier installation. In this video, we will be installing a YMGI 59 series indoor ceiling cassette to illustrate the recommended procedures to ensure a successful unit operation. Actual installation situations may vary due to building construction, application, and other factors. Ultimately, the contractor's experience and discretion will play a large part in the final outcome. When you receive your unit, check the faceplate and unit boxes to ensure that they are matched. The unit size is marked on both the unit and faceplate boxes as shown here. Check for any shipping damage to the boxes when receiving. If damage is found, mark it on the shipping papers with the shipper present and notify YMGI customer service immediately. Remove the unit and faceplate from their boxes. Check for any physical damage. Check that all parts and accessories have been received. A template has been included with the unit for ease of installation in all ceilings. Next, check the blower wheel to ensure that it rotates freely. Check that the coil is leak free by releasing the nitrogen as shown here. If no nitrogen is present, pressurize the coil with nitrogen to between 125 and 200 PSIG. If the nitrogen charge does not hold, a leak is present. Contact customer service immediately in the event of a leak, damage, or missing parts. With everything in good order, you can proceed with the installation. Find a location that will allow for unobstructed airflow that is not too close to any supply air vents electronic devices, or heat sources like kitchen equipment. The ceiling cassette disperses air in four directions for more efficient conditioning of the air. You must allow 39 inches away from any wall. Centering the unit in the room is strongly recommended. Provide a secure mounting for the unit. We are using quarter inch threaded rod hanging from two by four boards fastened to the rafters. Remove the bolt hooks for easier installation through the ceiling tile grid. Carefully lift the unit through the ceiling. Next, reinstall the bolt hooks and place the hanger in the opening. Now with the unit hanging securely, we will fasten the 2x4 boards in place to prevent movement of the unit and any extra noise from unit vibration. 
Next, drill a 3 inch hole through the wall to feed the refrigeration tubing, drain, and connecting wires to the outdoor unit. This hole must be pitched a quarter inch downward to accommodate proper drainage of the evaporator's condensation. Check the location of the hole for any obstructions such as pressurized water or gas piping or any live electrical lines in the path of the desired location of the hole. Remember the rule of thumb. Measure twice, drill once. Lay the connecting cable on top of the insulated copper lines. Secure with cable ties and cut the excess. Wrap with sealing tape. If you are connecting multiple zones, we suggest marking each piping line and cable with the designated zone that it is intended for. This is to prevent cross piping or wiring between the zones. Next, seal the ends of the copper lines with tape or any other method to prevent contamination or dirt from entering the system. Gently feed the cable and piping through the outside hole. Use extreme caution not to kink the refrigeration tubing or introduce dirt or debris into the system. Next, install the inner connecting cable to the terminal block in the electrical panel. Connect black to terminal 1, white to terminal 2, red to terminal 3, and green to ground. We recommend marking both ends of the cable in this manner to prevent the possibility of cross-wiring between the indoor and outdoor unit contacts. YMGI provides a hardwired controller with the unit in our Generation 2 series. To install this, mount the controller on the wall close to the unit and run the wire to the unit, plugging the modular end into the blue port provided on the printed circuit control board in the electrical box. After installing all wires, Replace the power box cover. Now remove the caps from the flare fittings to prepare to install the refrigerant tubing. Install both lines. Snug the flare nuts with two wrenches. Use caution not to over tighten the nuts and break the flares. Now we will install the drain line. Use the flex adapter included with the accessory kit to fasten into the drain outlet and then fasten 3 quarter PVC to drain to the outside. The ceiling cassette is equipped with a condensate pump which has a lift of 25 inches. The use of an auxiliary condensate pump may be necessary. After all the connections are made, we are ready to install the faceplate. Remove the shipping screws, then remove the grill cover. The cover mounts to the unit using four number eight screws. The screws mount into each corner. The screws are included with the cover. Mount the cover to the unit with the screws. Tighten the screws snugly to prevent vibration, but not to crack the plastic casing. Connect the wiring harnesses for the motors and display. The harnesses for the motors are identical and can be plugged into either side in our Generation 1 series. In our Generation 2 series, the wiring is tied together for both motors at the factory, requiring only one motor connection to the faceplate. Now adjust the unit to fit snugly against the ceiling to prevent any further vibration. Neatly tuck the wires out of the way of the blower. In a Generation 1, the wire for the damper motor cannot be tucked in. Drape it across the blower in such a way that it will not come in contact with the fan. After all wires are secured, reinstall the filter cover. After connections are made to the outdoor unit and all the preparations detailed in the outdoor unit video are made, you can start the unit. Using the remote or wired controller, test all the functions of the unit. Run the unit through all modes to ensure proper operation. The red light indicates power is present. The yellow light indicates heating.
The green indicates cooling mode. If no other light except the red is on and the louvers are open, that indicates that the unit is in fan mode. YMGI's U-Touch feature on the unit remote can improve your comfort level by bringing comfort control to your level instead of at the indoor unit's sensor. When you press the U-Touch button, the unit will use the temperature where the remote is located as its target temperature control. Once you do so, you will notice a figure of a person surrounded by stars appearing on the remote. Once the U-Touch stars appear, the remote will send a signal of the remote local temperature to the indoor unit. This remote local temperature will supersede the return air temperature as the unit's target temperature. A signal will be sent from the remote to the indoor unit updating the remote local temperature every 10 minutes. If at any time during this process a signal is not received by the indoor unit from the remote, the unit will switch back to the previously set temperature before the U-Touch feature was activated. To turn the U-Touch feature off, simply press the U-Touch button until you see the symbol disappear from the remote screen. By doing so, the return air temperature will take the place of the remote local temperature as the unit's target temperature. When finished, train the customer in the use of their unit. Fully complete the technician checklist included in the warranty registration sheet along with all other information and have the customer return the form along with a copy of the installation invoice within seven days of completion of the installation in order to validate the factory warranty. The technician checklist is an extra tool to ensure that all procedures have been completed and alert you to any possible issues before leaving the job site. By following the details presented in this video, in the installation manual, you will be assured of a successful installation with many years of quality service. If you have any questions about the unit during the course of the installation or servicing, feel free to contact our technical support from the job site with the unit model and serial numbers to better assist you in the resolution of any questions or issues you may have. Thank you for watching this video, and we wish you success in installation, customer satisfaction, and many years of peace of mind.